Hi there guys, welcome back to the Fahrenheit channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys Ravencoin overclocking settings for either an NVIDIA or AMD GPU. Okay guys, so now I know there's quite a lot of you out there that already are fully aware on how to set the settings for your nice hash or for if you change different cryptocurrencies, whether it's to ETH hash or whether it's Ravencoin or any other cryptocurrency that's out there to mine on nice hash. But this is more aimed for the beginners and the new miners out there that are simply just using the nice hash miner and they haven't set any of their settings up and they're just trying to figure out what setting would be the best for their card. Now, this uh, link uh, for this blog i will leave it in the description for you guys you can go ahead and scroll down there to check to check over this in your own time but let's just go through and read this article and as you can see this is an old article this has been out for a while but below you can find the most common and stable kapow ravencoin overclocking settings all in one place so overclocking settings below should serve as a starting point overclock to give you a rough idea about what settings you should use and might not be the best performance for your needs so basically what I was trying to say guys is that each individual card depending on which like memory uh, and things like that depending on which cooler it has and which model will have its own individual uh, hash rates and what, what power it runs at and the temperatures as well so you will have to you know adjust and you know Put the settings in a right little pot spot that's 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 the best for yourself so make sure you do little stat sheets and things like that to test your settings out just to get yourself into the right place so for myself i mean i'm currently using a rx3090 on this system here so all that you would need to actually do to set your settings would either be to install something such as msi afterburner and then all you need to do when it comes to having an MSI Afterburner is to go ahead and find the settings that it's showing you in the core. So with the core, what we do is we would go ahead and in the core, we would plus that by 100. And then for the memory clock, we would also put that up to 1000. So as you can see, guys, that's exactly the settings that I've got set in there for mine. And the watts and everything does run around exactly as it should do. And the temperature. What you're really going to want to do is once you have your settings in place is take a look over at the expected performance so if your gpu isn't kicking anywhere near this so if it's like you know let's say uh, let's say a whole complete five to ten mega hash uh, off of the expected performance then you know that either you may need to lower something down uh, or potentially ever so slightly gradually increase something but in most cases if you're not actually hitting the expected performance the probably main reason for that would be due to temperature reasons so maybe consider increasing your fan speed to 100 percent just to see whether that makes a difference i myself personally always run my gpus at 100 percent fan speed but that can come at a loss because you can you know run out of fans your fans can break and things like that so you can have more replacements and things like that my 3090 fans haven't broken at this specific time um, but I'm sure in the near future, I'm sure they will do because they have they have run at 24 hours, you know, full 100%. So then we're taking a look over at maybe some of the 3070 Ti's, so plus 100, and then the memory core plus 950, and then you'd be expecting around about 38 mega hash on the Kapow. And if we take a scroll down as well, you can see all the other G uh, GPUs for NVIDIA. But then you've also got AMD overclocking as well for Ravencoin as well. So myself personally, I have a 5700 and I also have a 5700 XT as well. Um, now they do also get the expected you know, mega hash when it comes to it. But as you can see, they do have different core voltages when it comes in the settings. And this is something that you would actually have to do by going into the AMD settings and you know making sure that you do that in some cases for 5700 xt's you may also need to do a special bios mod to actually get it to run and to give you the most efficient you know hash rate you know for your performance really for your money so make sure you keep that in consideration and then also as well for rx 588 gigabytes um when it comes to the core clock and things there make sure that you do you are adjusting this uh for the core yourself just adjust that a little bit just to make sure that it's the right setting for yourself uh, i would normally run that about 1150 uh, and then about 2150 but like i say guys you can move and adjust these around for yourself just until you get the right the right point and then also as well make sure you get your power right as well so you're not you know using too much power and you know making it less profitable for yourselves and then like i say it does kind of correlate across depending on these gpus and when it comes to the different you know 
memory rates and things like that it does matter which memory you do have inside of your gp so whether you have hynix or you know micron or anything like that if you have different ones it could depend on whichever the actual memory clock that you have to put in there but just make sure that you just slowly step by step moving this up and down until you find that you, you know your temperatures are low but then you then you're expected you know hash rate is exactly where that you're expecting it at this specific second you guys i am currently mining on xano but you know make sure that you know your hash rate is you know exactly where it's supposed to be and if it's not just keep adjusted until you get around to that point and if if you are struggling make sure you pop in the comment section you know which gpu that you have yourself uh, which algorithm or which cryptocurrency that you guys are struggling to get your settings on okay guys so all i really wanted to do with this video was just give you just a little bit of a rundown and just let you know how you can set yourself up for you know yourself some mining there also is some ethereum dagger hashimoto settings as well because you can still mine on ethw and things like that when it comes to it and this is something that's definitely worth checking over as well um if you want to go ahead and get your settings set up correctly and make sure your mining is as an efficient you know as you can do especially you know within these times where it's not really as profitable and most of us at this specific time are mining at a loss so make sure that if you are mining at a loss you're mining at the closest to the profit margin as you can do so you know if you if you're waiting for you you know for the fruit to pump then you can just wait for it um but if not you don't want to be waiting too long on, on something that's also as well potentially a depreciating asset so you know make sure that you are making aware of that but then again if you are using nice hash you are mining to btc so it's probably is the most stable currency so you definitely want to make sure that you have your settings you know set up just as correct as you can do so that you can pure you know get as get as much as you can do from nice hash um so you don't end up you know losing out uh, in the future when you could have earned you know quite a fair amount more okay guys thank you very much for watching this video if you took anything or learned anything from this video then please make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video